We can also, not surprisingly, uh, consider uh, the evolution of virulence in terms of a prisoner's dilemma. Um, uh, we're thinking in terms here of intraspecific cooperation or intraspecific defection. So this is within a parasite's population. Recall that with a prisoner's dilemma up here in the upper left-hand corner, we have mutual cooperation, a CC interaction with the payoff of R for reward for mutual cooperation. Down here in the lower right-hand corner, we have mutual defection, a DD interaction, uh, where the payoff is P, which stands for punishment for mutual defection. Over here, we have unilateral defection. It's the payoff for being a defector in the midst of, a, of cooperators, one or more. And the payoff there is T, temptation to defect. And over here in the upper right-hand corner, we have unilateral cooperation. That's being a cooperator within um, an environment that contains defectors, one or more. And uh, the payoff value for being a unilateral cooperator is S, which stands for the sucker's payoff. Now note that instead of using cooperation and defection over here and cooperation defection up here, uh, we've instead replaced those terms with economy and expediency. So economy corresponds to cooperation, expediency corresponds to defection. So when we have a mutually cooperative interaction, what that means is that it's an economical uh, replicator uh, parasite uh, that's found within a population of economical parasites. Where we have mutual defection, instead it's an expedient parasite that finds itself within a population of expedient parasites. Similarly, when we have the uh, unilateral defection, the, the payoff of T, what we have is an expedient parasite found within a population of economical parasites. And when we have uh, the uh, payoff value of S, the uh, sucker's payoff, unilateral cooperation, we have an economical parasite that finds itself within a population of expedient parasites. So the upside of being economical is that by displaying restraint, the population has a greater potential of producing the level of virulence that is optimal uh, for the parasite. Uh, if there's less restraint, then there te will tend to be greater virulence than what is optimal for the parasite. So that's where the reward for mutual cooperation comes in. It allows the parasite to display overall a higher fitness uh, because it's closer to its optimal virulence. It can hold its population closer to its optimal virulence because it's displaying, the individual members are displaying restraint. With mutual defection, by contrast, the individual members are not displaying restraint, and as a consequence, the population is less able or not able at all to hold the level of virulence that it's displaying to that level which is optimal. By displaying greater virulence than is optimal, the population's transmission ability is reduced, and as a consequence, the fitness of the individual members of the population are reduced. So that's the uh, punishment for mutual defection. In the case of unilateral defection, what we have is an expedient individual within a population of economical individuals. Uh, because the expedient individual is not a substantial portion of the overall population, uh, the population as a whole tends to display something closer to mutual cooperation and therefore closer to the optimal level of virulence. But nevertheless, the expedient individual within that population is able to out-replicate the uh, economical individuals. So we have the best of both worlds, you have a higher fraction of the population as a consequence of your expedient growth rate without having overall too much of an impact on the virulence displayed by the population. So therefore, higher numbers uh, from faster population growth or more effective, greater levels of population growth um, in combination with a retention of a relatively high potential to uh, be transmitted. In the case of the sucker's payoff, you're instead an individual that restrains its growth, restrains its impact on the host at the expense of its growth rate, uh, but the population as a whole doesn't display that restraint, and so therefore there's suboptimal transmission and you're making up less and less a fraction of the total population, the sucker's payoff. Now recall in the prisoner's dilemma that there's always uh, a greater fitness, at least in the short term, associated with uh, individuals uh, that defect, in this case are expedient, rather than ones that are economical. And so just like with the prisoner's dilemma generally, we have to ask the question, why should uh, individual members of parasite populations uh, display restraint and something uh, that will have a potential to approximate mutual population uh, rather than displaying defection? 
In other words, why don't parasites display uh, the maximal uh, level of virulence that they uh, that they genetically conceivably are possible uh, have the potential to display. Why is it that in fact a parasite population may display levels of virulence that are lower uh, than than what could conceivably be obtained by this by a parasite population? And the answers to that question are quite similar to the answers that we uh, came to in discussing cooperation, um, just in more abstract terms. But we'll get to that.